I must say forces that form your future. This is my, like, I've been, like, giddy to do this series. This has been, like, for me, like, the, one of the best series we've ever done. But we have to talk about Star Wars first because it was the first movie I ever saw. For real, in my whole life, it was the first movie I ever saw. I was seven, and I think we had, like, a, like, like a, I don't think it was even VHS yet. I think it was, like, the Betamax machine. Anybody knows, even know what that is? Yeah, yeah. So my uncle, my uncle had one of these things, and we, we drove two hours to my uncle's house, and we put the, for real, and we put the, we put the tape in the thing, and I was like, whoa! crazy and that was the first time I ever saw a movie and it was awesome and I was so excited the force was with me I'm gonna say the force is with me so who is your favorite character in Star Wars tell somebody around you tell somebody around you who's your favorite character in Star Wars do you know what nobody ever says nobody ever says Jar Jar Binks (laughs) somebody said that you like Jar Jar Binks? Okay, never mind. She didn't see, see I'm, I'm still rolling, man. Like nobody's ever, every service I've done this service, like nobody's ever said that yet. Nobody's really, but the thing is this, like when it comes to Star Wars and you hear about the force and all this kind of stuff and like it kind of gets you excited because it's fun to watch and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I, I, I had a, like here's actually what happened. So I'm reading scripture and every year I try to find a, a key verse for the year. I try to find like, what's the, gonna be the, like, the theme verse of my life for the year and like, what's God, God after? And God gives me this verse and all of a sudden, like I, like, I go to see the new Star Wars movie and I'm like, they, they work together for good. Oh, for real, everybody say the force is real. Force is Look at the person next to you and say the force is realer than you think. <laughs> now I know, like as soon as like, like let's see if I can help you because here's, for four weeks, we're gonna study one concept and the concept, like we're gonna break it apart over the course of four weeks. But, and I want you to write it down. I want you to get a note sheet out and I want you to write this down. Here's kind of the key thought of all four weeks of this series. Our future is determined by the forces in our lives. Say that with me. The future, the future. is determined by the forces in our lives. And it's true. Like there are good forces and there are bad forces. Like immediately we think like, okay, like we're talking about supernatural stuff. There's like demons and angels and they're fighting over our souls. And like all that kind of stuff is true, but I'm not talking about that. Like that's true. And I believe that, but that's not what I'm speaking about. I actually want to talk about uh, supernatural forces versus natural forces. I think your future is formed by some supernatural things that are completely like they're up to God. And then there are some natural things. Everybody say natural things that are completely up to you and basically you can deform your own future. You can form your future or you can deform your future based on how you understand the forces in our world. In fact, the key verse that we're studying all four weeks, I'm gonna give you this verse every week of the series because the verse, like, it alters my theology. It changed how I viewed the Bible, how I view faith a little bit. It's messing me up a little bit. I'm hoping it alters for you a little bit of the foundational structure of faith and it gets built on a better foundation. Can we see the verse? I know he already put it up there, but like, hey, can we see the verse? Okay, good. Let's just, let's, okay, here we go. Here's the verse, Deuteronomy 29, 29. The what? The secret things. Everybody say there are secret forces. There are secret forces, according to this verse. There are secret things or secret forces. These belong to who? They're not up to you. They belong to God. There are some things in this world that happen that are not up to you. They belong to God. They are secret forces. I must say secret forces. But those things which are, what's the next word? I must say revealed forces. There are some revealed forces that are entirely up to you. These belong to us and to our forever. See, some of your future is determined by God, but some of your future is determined by who? You. And you can deform or form your own future. Let me just take it a little bit further. Everybody say secret things. He says this in the verse. Let me define it for you. Forces that are outside our control. Forces which belong entirely to God. This is all the why God stuff of life. God, why did this happen? Why did this occur? Are there some things that you have basically no control over? Can I see your hands if you understand that? Yeah, like, so how come so-and-so got cancer? How come so-and-so had an accident? How come, how come I lost my job? How come this bad thing happened? How come all this why God, why? There's all this why stuff that we basically have zero control over. And there's nothing we can do about it. There's nothing we can do to make it different. It's just kind of the hand you're dealt. It's the cards you get dealt in life. You with me so far? But it's not all negative. There are some secret forces that God deals you 
that are not stuff that are negative, they're positive. So for example, all of a sudden, like uh, this amazing blessing that you never thought was ever gonna happen, bam, it just happens to you. You're like, whoa, I can't believe that occurred. Some sort of favor happens. Some sort of good thing just like all of a sudden like drops out of the sky in your lap. I was actually talking, we did this service on Thursday in St. Cloud. We're preaching in St. Cloud and this, this girl comes to me afterwards or beforehand and she goes, hey, I gotta tell you something. Like, we're getting married soon and we're like, yay, we're so excited you're getting married or whatever. And then she goes, but what's really cool is we didn't know how we were gonna pay for the reception and like the DJ and all that kind of stuff. And she says, so I put my name in this drawing for this free, like huge production and I won. Like I get the whole thing. That's a secret force of favor in her life. Isn't that cool? Yeah, yeah that's pretty awesome. Like that's, and that, and that does, does, stuff, does stuff like that happen to every life? Yes or no? Yes, every life has some good things and some bad things that you had no control over. Do you agree with that? Yes. Absolutely, there are good things and bad things that happen to you. You have no control whatsoever. These are secret forces. Everybody say secret forces. Secret forces. And they form or deform your future. Cancer, job loss, raises, promotion, all of which form your future and you pretty much, a lot of it, you had no control over. But there's a secondary kind of forces that you have lots of control over, and this is called revealed forces. Everybody say revealed forces. These are forces inside your control. This is the forces that belong to you. You are entirely responsible for this stuff. This is kind of the learning and the knowledge and the wisdom stuff of life. If you could learn some things, could you make better decisions to get a better future? Yeah, this is the, like, so let me see if I can help you with this for a second, because I feel like a lot of times people think everything's up to God, and then when their life doesn't go great, they blame God, but they never bothered to actually understand the revealed forces of their own life. So for example, um, let's just think about some, who likes to garden in here? Anybody like to garden? Okay, like anybody who's a farmer, is, do we have any farmers in the, in the house? Like, okay, you're sort of, like, you're not actually a farmer, but like, but you, you, okay, so like, I know you, you're not an actual, actual, what, what do you do? Okay, <laughs> but you used to be a farmer. I didn't even know that about you. Oh my gosh, but they, I, know she, I know they garden. Okay, anyway, imagine for a second that you're gonna be a gardener. Woo! There are some secret forces about gardening and there's some revealed forces about gardening. So for example, the stuff that God is responsible for is wind, rain, floods, earthquakes, sun, seasons, and rodents. Do you have any, any, any sort of say over this stuff? No, you have no say over and over. By the way, the rodents are, are stormtroopers. That's what they are. Um, like, and they come and they eat your little crops and you're like, kick them in the, anyway. So, like, so there's that part of it. But then there's also revealed forces that you are entirely responsible for. Planting, weeding, plowing, fertilizing, and harvesting. Who's responsible for that stuff? You are. And here's the thing. Sometimes I hear believers, people of faith, they say stuff like this. God, I'm just declaring in faith that I'm gonna have crop. I'm gonna have, like, you go, you go out to your garden and you look at your garden, you're like, God, I'm believing for a garden. I'm believing for a crop. I'm believing for this to come up. Did you plant any seeds? No. Well, you ain't getting a freaking crop. <laughs> you can pray and speak faith and talk to your garden and walk around your garden and pretend, like, you can do all that, but until you actually do what? Plant some seeds, you ain't getting a crop. Right? right? Secret forces reveal for, say it with me. Secret forces Reveal forces. Oh, let's, oh, let's go for those. Well, how about education? Let's just think about education. This is my master's degree. This is, I got this in 1997. I'm an old dude. So I get this master's degree in 1997. And some of my education is up to God. Some of it's up to me. So think about it for a second. The school. Um, high school, was it up to you where you went mostly? No, you just got stuck with one. And that affected your future. It affected your future. The teachers, do you have any say of what teachers you get? No, like this is totally up to God. It's the, it's the luck of the draw, man. It's, it's Russian roulette with school. <laughs> For real, that's how it feels to some of you. Like, like, uh, like uh, uh, your IQ, anybody get to choose their IQ? No, totally up to God. Class environment. Some of you had great class environment and it helped you. Some of you had terrible class environment and it hurt you. This is all entirely up to who? God, these are secret forces. On the other hand, there are some revealed forces that are entirely up to you. Studying, paying attention, staying focused, working hard, asking for help. Who's responsible for this? You are, and you can be like this. God, I believe by faith that I am deeply loved and highly favored. I have no idea why I'm using this other accent. Deeply loved and highly favored and greatly blessed and totally righteous. But I'm, and as long as you don't study, you're still failing. 
And you can declare how loved and blessed and favored you are, but if you're not willing to actually open up the book and study, you're gonna fail. And if you blame God, that's not true. That's, that's, that's terrible, man. Yeah. I'll give you a third one. I'll see what I can think of. Oh, so Whoosh. <laughs> Ken and Barbie, think about relationships. <laughs> <laughs> Think about relationships for just a second. Think about how relationships happen. There's this chance meeting and your eyes meet across the room and you don't know what it is, but you got to talk to her. And it's like this instant chemistry and it really had nothing to do with you. It just happened to you at the right place, right time. All of a sudden chemistry shows up and suddenly you're like, whoa, I got to know who that is. That's all up to who? God. God. God's responsible for that part of it. But there's a secondary part of it. You have to actually ask the girl out. Right? You got to try so often like, I'm just praying for a wife. I'm just praying for a wife. You ask him out? Nope. You're going to pray a long time. <laughs> At some point, you have to actually ask somebody out. And then you've got to treat her well. And then you actually have to propose if you want to get married. And then you have to love her faithfully. I would say it like this. God loves you. And God loves your wife, but God's not going to love her for you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. God's going to love you, and God's going to love her, but it's not, God's not going to love her for you. There's some part of this. The reason why relationships don't work out is not all God's fault, guys. There's a part that's God's, and there's a part that's... Come on, say there's my responsibility. Yeah, nobody even likes those words. Ugh, really? Let's just blame God and not do anything. That's what a lot of us want to do. I'll just pray to God that he remove my addiction, but I'm never going to a meeting. Right? Think about, think about careers for a second. Let's just let's imagine for a second, you got this awesome job at Starbucks. Woohoo! Starbucks is awesome. You should get a job there. <laughs> for real, like they give you two free years of education if you work there. For real, for, like for real. Like that's one of, their, one of their plans right now. It's like it's super smart. They'll give you two free years of college education if you just work there for a few years. It's, it's a, pretty deal, a pretty good deal. Like, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Go look it up. It's a great marketing plan, strategy for their, for their company. Anyhow, think about what's up to God and what's up to us in relationship to our career. The economy and layoffs and opportunities and government decisions and the stock market, all this stuff affects careers and you have no say in it at all. On the other hand, resumes and education and confidence and working hard and integrity, who's responsible for this stuff? Man. Huh. And then, oh, oh, let me think of another one. Do I have any more? Oh, oh, I thought of this one. Nobody's going to like this one, but I'm going to bring it up. I don't like this one at all. Ugh. I'm not going to step on the scale and show you what my way. I'm not going to, I'm not going to like find out even, I actually don't know. I don't like scales. I don't step on them. Like, I don't want to know. And there's a part of it that's up to God. DNA and health issues, who's that up to? God. Metabolism, body type, who's it up to? But on the other hand, eating right and working out and not smoking and drinking less and indulging less, who's that up to? Us. And here's the, like, like this is the part that, this is what dawned on me. So often, we love to use the excuse of, there are secret forces against me, man. And that's why I can't succeed. <laughs> so think about it. The soil was bad, but you never watered. And the teacher hates me, but you never studied. And it's all the company's fault, but you never show up on time. She's a terrible person, but you don't love her well. It's just my DNA, man, but you never exercise or try to even eat right. Come on. Come on. See, there's a part that is up to you, and there's a part that's entirely up to God. Secret forces. Do you know this even works with spiritual things? Part of your spiritual life is entirely up to God. And part of your spiritual life is pretty much entirely up to who? You. Think about it for a second. Secret forces of a, of a spiritual life. Go, keep going. Right there. There we go. Uh, grace, who's it up to? God. Love, who's it up to? Favor, who's it up to? Blessings, God. righteousness, God. destiny. God. 
At the end of this day, God promises all of this to our lives. You look all over scripture, he's got all kinds of promise. I promise you this, and 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 I promise you this. But there are also some revealed forces. You have to actually believe this stuff and agree with God. I say agree with God. Because if you disagree and think that's not gonna happen, well, then it's not gonna happen. You gotta agree with God. You have to speak faith. You gotta like talk faith instead of fear. And by the way, I talked to somebody after the first service and they were like, the reason why nobody actually works on their revealed forces is that they're too afraid. They'd rather maintain the status quo with their jacked up life than actually address their issues and get change. They're just too afraid. We've gotta believe and agree with God and speak faith and worship and study and read scripture and pray and give. All of this stuff is our response back to God. Is this making sense? Wow. And so much of our lives, we love to say, it's all up to God. I'm gonna walk in faith. I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna declare. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and that's all awesome. And I'm not telling you not to do that. And all that stuff is true. But there's also some wisdom stuff of life. There's some brains issues. So for example, Jesus Christ took your punishment at the cross. So God's not mad at you any longer. He's not gonna punish you. He punished Jesus so he can bless you. Is that good news? That's really good news. But what some people hear is, oh yay, God's not gonna punish me, so let's go smoke crack. (laughs) For real, and I'm like, hey, well you could. It just doesn't seem like a very wise use of the rest of your life, (laughs) right? And it's not really that it's, it's it's like, it's not like a a good and evil thing as much as it actually boils down to wisdom. God changed you at the cross. He gave you blessing and favor and goodness and righteousness. He he blessed you with all this, but if you squander it, it's your choice. It's your life, and he's not mad at you. But on the other hand, if you kind of dug into the revealed forces and kind of figured out what could I actually do to get a little wiser, a little smarter, get a little more knowledge here, and all of a sudden you could form a better future. Once this verse kind of sunk into my brain, like I said, I'm gonna teach this all three weeks, all four weeks of the series, I'm gonna gonna talk about this verse first so you catch the concept so it's kind of entrenched in our souls. I realized, by the way, we're gonna explain it a lot in the next three three other weeks, but this week it's all introduction. And I just wanna give you three statements about secret forces and revealed forces to see if I can start you down the journey of thinking about what you are responsible for in life. Can we do it? Okay, here's the first one, write this this down. God will always do what God promised to do, but God will never do what he called you to do. God will always do what he promised to do. Anything God promises, he's gonna do it. Would you agree with that? But God's never gonna do what he called you to do. He's not gonna plant seeds for you. He's not gonna gonna water. He's not gonna gonna till the soil. He's not gonna harvest the crop. If you're not willing to go out there and actually get your hands a little dirty, you're not gonna see a better life. Think of it like this. Um, I heard this story a long time ago. Kind of cheesy, but like it it works. Um, There was this guy who heard this flood was coming. He's like, oh man, I heard a flood was coming. So God, please, please, please save me from the flood. I'm just, I'm trusting Jesus, baby. I'm trusting Jesus for the flood. So then he went in his house and he kind of turns on his TV and the reporter's kind of talking about the flood. He's like, hey, whatever you do, if you live at this address, you need to get out of the house because the flood's coming. It's his house. He's like, I'm just gonna trust you, Jesus. Turn off the television. I'm just, I'm just trusting you, Jesus. Flood hits, wham. He like runs up to the second level, like floods rising, floods rising. He's at the window of the second level. God, I'm trusting you. I'm just trusting you to protect me and save me. I trust you, Jesus. Boat goes by. Jump in the boat, I take you to safety. No, no, I'm just trusting Jesus. <sighs> Flood keeps rising. He's up on the roof. He's praying some more. God, oh, please, please save me. Please, please save me. Helicopter flies overhead. Drop some rope, grab the rope, man, I'll save you. No, no, I'm trusting Jesus. Just trusting Jesus, baby. Just walking in faith. Helicopter flies away. Flood rises some more. House crashes. He drowns. He gets to heaven. He's kind of ticked off. God, God, you said I trust you by faith. Things gonna work out. I trust you by faith. You let me drown. He goes, really? I sent you a reporter, a boat, and a helicopter. What more you need? See, there's part of our lives that God is responsible for. But then there's this wisdom piece that you have to actually recognize, maybe I should grab the freaking rope. I said it last week and I wanna say it again this week. This is kind of like, I told you, like the verse for the year for me is this verse. 
And I got to thinking there's that passage in scripture that says that you are to speak to your mountain and the mountain will be removed in the sea. Just walk in faith, speak to your mountain. And I was like, yeah, you know, speak to your mountain and pray to your mountain or pray for your mountain. Like that will go and like ask God to do a miracle. Awesome. Ask God for the miracle. But he may answer by saying, pick up a shovel and move the dang mountain. He may answer the prayer by giving you the shovel and say, now it's time to do the hard work of one shovelful at a time. Second thought I want you to write down. 50% of my future is what happens to me. 50% of my future is what happens to me. But 50% of my future is what happens through me and is entirely up to me. There's not, everything's not up to God. Like, and this is how this works. You hear spirit, like really, really spiritual people, like, I am really, really spiritual. I'm trusting God by faith. And then you get sick. And so you're like, okay, God, I'm asking you for a miracle. And they'll come to me and say, will you pray over me? And I'm like, awesome. I would love to pray over you. So I pray for a miracle. We anoint them with oil. We believe in all that. Sometimes God heals them. But here's the thing. After I pray over them and anoint them with oil, I look at them and say, go to the flipping doctor. Because there are some secret things that God is responsible for, right? But then there are some also some revealed things. How does God many times answer the prayer of healing? Through a doctor doctor or a little pill. And all of a sudden, wow, I'm getting better. I'm getting healed. And it's because God uses the revealed things to heal you. Many people will come to me, oh, pastor, I need a job, I need a job, I need a job. Awesome, let me pray to you, get a job. Jesus, I pray that you give them a job. God, I ask you to give them a great job, maybe be better than what, anything they've ever had before. After I get done praying, I look at them and say, now it's time to send out resumes. And I've talked to people of faith who say, well, I'm just gonna trust God by faith. You know, the people are just gonna find me. And then 10 years later, when their life isn't moving forward, they blame God like he never answered their prayer, but they weren't actually willing to engage in the revealed things of life. And I can pray for your addiction to go. I can pray for God to do a miracle, and sometimes he does, and nobody ever wants it again. But then there are other times the way he answers the prayer is go to a meeting and 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 go to a meeting. And and the end result is you get sober because God did it because you just work the revealed things. See, this is not issues of sin or non-sin. This is issues of let's be smart with the lives God gives us. Is that making sense? I'll give you a third statement. The crossing primarily emphasizes God's secret forces of grace. That's who we are as a church. We want to tell you that God is for you, not against you. Everybody say, God is for me, not against me. God is for me, not against me. Man, we believe this to the core of our being, that God is working on your behalf. Everybody say, God is working for my behalf. God is working for my behalf. Even though you don't see it, you don't know it, like you don't understand it all, God's out there working on your behalf. How do I know? Because scripture says you're deeply loved. God loves you and I faithfully and unconditionally. If that's good news, make some noise. That he loves you no matter what you do or how you act or how you respond, you are always deeply loved. You are also highly favored. He grants you and I special favor. He actually says he surrounds the righteous with a shield. If that's good news, make some noise. That's great. That's great stuff. You're greatly blessed. You and I get the same blessings as Abraham. Read Galatians 3.14 sometime. The same way that God promised to bless Abraham, he promises to bless you. Now, the crazy cool thing about this is when he says, I'm blessing you, Abraham, he uses the Hebrew word baraka. I say baraka. 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 And it actually, it actually means peace, prosperity, freedom, and safety. So God is thinking about your life and working on your behalf to make sure that you're at peace to make sure that you become better off and not worse off, to make sure that you walk in freedom from the things that hold you back, to make sure that you have a safe, beautiful, good life. Is that good news? Make some noise. This is all what God is doing on your behalf. You're righteous according to scripture. Right now, everybody say, I am righteous. God freely gives you and I the gift of righteousness because of Jesus. That because of Jesus, you and I have been made righteous. You don't have to try to be a good person. God made you righteous at the cross. It was a free gift. Is that good news? And then lastly, destiny. You and I are destined to reign in life. In fact, I love the words because um, like many times in churches, you're presented with someday if you walk by faith in the future after you've kicked the bucket, you'll reign in the afterlife. (laughs) 
But scripture says that you reign in this life as well. That God, that's why he says in another place in scripture, you are more than a, what's the next word? Conqueror. Come on, say, I am more than a conqueror. That you're not just a conqueror or a basic level. You're like first class conqueror, man. Like I'm more than a conqueror through Christ. And here's what I want you to write down next because it's so important. These secret forces that I just went over, go ahead and put it on the screens. The secret forces of life are God's gift to us and his responsibility. He is responsible for all of that. That's a gift he wants to give us. We are called to just believe these things in faith. Ephesians 2, 8 says, for by grace are you saved through what? Faith. faith. So you just, I believe that I am righteous. I believe that I have a destiny. I believe God's got a plan for me. I believe that I'm gonna be blessed. I believe I'm not, I, I can't be cursed, I'm gonna be blessed. I believe favor's coming my direction. I believe I'm loved. I have to believe this by faith. But then there's, that's the secret part. That's the secret forces. Basically, this is awesome. And there's nothing you can do about it to be unblessed or unfavored or unrighteous. You're blessed and favored regardless of what you do. Is that good news? But then the revealed forces, the revealed forces of life are our responsibility. Whose responsibility? Come on, say it's my responsibility. And what we do with them is our gift back to God. It's a gift exchange. God wants to be good to us and good to us and good to us. And he has all these ridiculously awesome gifts to take you to a better future. But at some point, you're gonna have to choose to respond back to God in order to see this stuff happen and fulfilled in your life. And what happens a lot of times is we just wanna say, I'm favored, I'm blessed, I'm righteous, I'm fine, but I don't wanna pick up a shovel. And I don't wanna actually study. And I don't wanna really work hard at school. And I don't wanna actually seek to like stay a little bit longer in the evening at work or maybe come in a little early to get the job done. I'm just gonna speak faith and then when it doesn't work out, I can blame God because I spoke faith. And what we've ignored is there are revealed forces that have deformed our own lives but we decided we would just blame God and live in our terrible situation. Yeah. Come on, say secret forces. Secret forces. Revealed forces. Revealed forces. They're at work right now in your life. I found this, this poem, this quote like was amazing to me. I don't even know who the writer is. Um, her name is Ella, but the, the quote is awesome. She says this, one ship sails east and another west. One goes one direction, one goes the other. While the same breezes blow, it's the set of the sail and not the wind that determines where it will go. And here's what I would tell you, like I'll apply this spiritually to you, that the forces of God's favor are blowing on your life. The forces of grace are blowing on your life. The forces of goodness are blowing on your life. The forces of destiny and a plan and purpose. And God has so many things and righteousness and like it's all there, blessing right there. It is just whispering, over your life, but at some point you have to actually put up the sail and navigate the ship a little bit. If you're gonna actually reach the destination he's trying to blow your life towards. He's not gonna plant the seeds for you. He's not gonna study for you. By the way, once in a while he'll throw you a bone he didn't study and so go, oh God, help me do well. And he just happened to do well that, that time but he's not gonna let you abuse that long-term. Eventually, he's gonna be like, hey, you need to freaking study, (laughs) right? Immaturity in our lives wants to have faith, but never grab hold of the part of wisdom and do what we need to do. And God is after you with a full life. You walking in faith and trusting him, but then also wisely doing what you can do so that your future gets formed and not deformed. We're gonna talk about it three more weeks, but today I just wanna ask you two final questions. And these are hard questions. These questions are hard because um, I asked them in St. Cloud on Thursday night and I preached there and we're in the car and we're driving home. Um, and uh, Kelly says, so how did you answer those questions? Like, I'm just the preacher, man. (laughs) 
And she made me, put me on the spot and made me answer questions I didn't want to answer either. So when I ask this, I want you to understand that I am doing the work to answer this also. Here's the first question. Secret force. Everybody say secret forces once again. What is one area outside? Everybody say outside. Outside Outside your control that you need to just rest and believe that God is working for your good to form your future. What's one area where you're like, I just have to trust God. I can't, like, and what happens is many times we stress about the stuff we have no control over. Just, just, I'm gonna choose to trust God. I have no control. It's outside my control. Second Thessalonians 2.13 says, God is at work in you who what? Believe. Believe. God is working. Everybody say, God is working working. for my good. good. Say it again. God is working working. for my good. So this is the statement I want want you to write something down on on your sheet of paper. I believe God's secret forces are working for my good in, what's the word for you? Be specific. In what area do you feel like you're completely, you have no control over it. You just need to remember, I gotta trust that God is in control working for my good. I gotta trust God is in control working for my good. Whatever that area is, write it down. And this is the area in which you just speak faith and you walk in faith, not fear. And you just trust that God's got it completely. But then there are revealed forces. Everybody say revealed forces. What is where one area inside? Everybody say inside. Your control. Where you need to take action to form your own future so it doesn't end up deformed. Students in here? Maybe it's time to stop blaming the teachers and actually study. said to mom (laughs) right maybe for those of you that uh, have been blaming DNA go to the gym too go to the gym too eat a little healthier anyway come on there's 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 a part that's God's and there's a part that's yours you know that this year could be a better year for you you just have to own the revealed forces or own your part. For some of you, you've been complaining about your boss and complaining about your job, but you don't show up on time and you're not a person of integrity. This is my different year. I'm gonna own my part of this equation so that a raise happens, so that promotion happens, so a future happens. See, because God's got something better if you'll just own the part that's yours. I found this verse of scripture that I've read a million times before, but all of a sudden it hit me with new eyes based on what we just talked about. It's Matthew 7, 24 and 25. And it goes like this. Anyone who listens to my teachings and follows it is? No, this is not just about listening. It's about what? Following. Following. That's the reveal forces. You're taking action. You're doing your part. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rains came and the torrents and the floodwaters rise and the wind beat against the house. This is all the secret forces of life. You have no control over the wind, the rain, the floods, None of this is up to you. You can't do anything about it. But if you're walking in the revealed forces, it won't collapse because your life has been built on bedrock. Huh. I really am gonna challenge you to write something down. This is the hardest one for me to write down for me personally. I already know what I need to do for a better future. Actually, here's how I said it to myself. I already know what I need to do for a better future, and I've been sitting on my ass for two years. I'm not gonna sit there any longer. That's what I said to myself. What, what is that for you? What is this thing that you know you need to do and you know you need to do and you know you need to do? And like, I'm not just talking about spiritual things, I'm talking about like for your future to get better, what is it that you're just not willing to engage? Finally pick up the shovel, plant some seeds. What if you just wrote it down and today, today I declare, I'm gonna act in this. Because right now your life is giving you, 50% of your life is giving you the results of your seeds. 50%, half of your life is the results of what you have done. And 50% of your life is entirely up to God. 
Now, here's the thing. This is only the first week of this, and so I want to tell you where we're going next. Um, I think that we th- should spend the next three weeks about around the revealed forces that actually cripple us that we have control over. So each week for the next three more weeks, we're going to study just three forces that you have total control over. I would say they're my responsibility. So for example, next week we're going to talk about these three. The forces of belief, habits, and feelings. You are totally responsible for your own habits. Habits don't happen to you, they happen through you. Huh. Feelings. Feelings don't happen to you, they happen through you. You have control of your feelings if you decide to. We're going to talk about how can I begin to work the revealed forces so I end up with better beliefs and better habits and better feelings. Next week after that, we're going to talk about dreams and seeds and relationships. How can I work these? And then last week of the series is on thoughts and words and values. Because if we could get a hold of the stuff that we actually do have control of, these forces will form a better future. I've studied this a lot. Because I have, a, I have a pastor friend from um, Seattle. Um, he's got a church called the Champion Center Church in Seattle. And he wrote this book. It's kind of funny. He wrote this book. Um, huh, it's called Forces That Form Your Future. <laughs> Weird. Um, and by the way, because he's from Seattle, I've been giving him crap all week because they're playing the Vikings tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And here's the, here's the worst part about this poor guy. Like tomorrow, he has to preach at 10 a.m. Seattle time when they kick off here. So he's gonna have like five people at his church. So if you, so if you wanna pray for Pastor Kevin, he's really disappointed right now that he can't actually watch the game because he's gotta actually be preaching. But anyway, the, his, he wrote this incredible book there are, and all nine of those forces are listed in here and explained. I would love for you to get the book and start the year off studying this along with me. He's not gonna say exactly what I'm gonna say, but the concepts are gonna be there. And the result of this is as we study this stuff together, your 2016 will be way better than 2015 because you decided to own the revealed forces of your life. Are you excited for the rest of this? This gets me happy. I'm like, this is like, I'm stoked because some of you are finally gonna engage your life rather than just speak some sort of, oh, I'm trusting God by faith, but I'm never doing anything. And this is gonna make all the difference. It's going to be a really good year for you. You enjoy it? Give God a praise. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're going to do. Thank you for the start of this. Thank you for being a good God. God, I pray right now that you would empower and strengthen people to deal with what they wrote on their pages. The stuff they need to trust you with, may they just let it go and trust you. The stuff they have control over, may they embrace the hard work of picking up the shovel. And may you take them to a better future. In Jesus' name we pray, everybody said, amen. Amen.